Hey, hey, we got a cool little circuit here. It's an electric motor which is hooked up <clears throat> coming out through I think 1.5 volts DC right now which comes into a red LED red LED in series with <clears throat> a speaker one side in the speaker and then the other side out of the speaker back into a variable resistor back to a switch back to the positive so I press the power the red light comes on and there's also a white LED here connected in parallel across the speaker so when the circuit starts and stops there's a little flash the flash on starting is less and if we turn I think the potentiometer is all the way up and we've also got the DC motor hooked in uh, in parallel with the uh, red LED and sitting on an angle in a tin with some objects and it makes a sound but now watch this if I can do this uh, how can I do this use this to hit the trigger and I'm going to change the polarity while it's running and you'll notice that the red LED won't come on and the motor will be louder also seems to be a bright flash of light in the beginning of the cycle. Aha! Uh -huh. As you can see, it's actually generating black EMF. The motor, every time it rotates, I guess the field collapses and it's shooting back energy. That's kind of cool. So maybe instead of going through a speaker, we could try capturing that through a diode and a capacitor. Very interesting. Try three volts, which is can't. Oh, we were on three volts. Let's try four volts on the. Not much difference. One more up. Let's try other way. <laughs> cool. So that's a higher voltage, and the kickback is making a tense light. So if you could oscillate that quick enough, the motor wouldn't even spin. It makes a bit of a synthesizer. Let's try one more notch up. I hope we don't blow anything. And there's a speaker on there right now causing resistance. And actually, in what I think about this, keeping this circuit safe. It's also uh, showing us the frequency of the motor by the sound. Yeah, that's super bright flash kickback. See how the motor isn't even moving? Actually, it is a bit. And one last setting.
connected something or blew something. Is the motor hot? No. Oh, we lost a uh, pin here. I had an LED between uh, in series, a red one, two volts, got cooked pretty good. There's very hard to see on this camera and it doesn't matter so maybe a resistor on that LED or just uh, take that connection straight through this is cool because we have a uh, resistor in the circuit uh, a variable resistor we can change the uh, frequency of the motor listen here come on get the switch ah cut cut All right, all right. Here we go. And I'm going to start it and then adjust the variable resistance. There's a point where it just hums. Very good. I work on uh, machines like this because uh, I'm interested in annoyatrons. <laughs> and now, just for shits and giggles, I attached a little piece of uh, parquet container. They're not paying me, but these things are great for making prototypes and stuff. Drew a little design on there, and I'm going to press it up, get a shadow out. Basically, what we've done now is turn this motor into a flywheel, a storage device. Cool, eh? Next thing we need to do is to get an LED hooked up there so that if we get it spinning fast enough, we should be able to continuously light the LED as it slows down and it will get less and less bright. Interesting. Very cool. I just did a test of that and it worked. What I did is uh, connected an LED to the same place that the um, uh, motor is. Turn the voltage up a bit and adjusted the potentiometer for less resistance and watch this. See when I start start and stop it or connect and disconnect the switch. Increase a small flash, I'm getting big flash in the end, but if I hold it down. And then watch this. Watch this. So I was running the LED on the spin down. I can actually feel like wind or cool air on my hand. That's awesome. Cool. So if you keep it in the range of where the LED is still being lit and then just occasionally add some power to the flywheel, you can have a pulsating... Um, constant light source. You try reversing the polarity and turning the power down a bit. Oh, the uh, LEDs stay on fully. And the uh, motor spins in the opposite direction, which makes sense. Now this red LED is interesting because as I spin it up, it gets bright for a second and then it seems to dim down. See that? And then it's still on a little bit. Whoa. We burnt the LED, too much current. The red one, but the speaker one is nice and bright.
Well, I've the red LED with uh, blue and green in series, which makes cyan. And over here, this light has a small spark on the startup. Sort of, but when I let go, it flashes. And you can see how the motor is spinning in the same direction as the LED's current, so as it's slowing down, it's still on. Let's try adding more juice. More juice. LED is not burning out. Oh, I think it is. Yeah, and now we've created a short. So the whoa, that got stinky plastic. We added a stainless steel cup next to it and added some wires on there with some tape. I found the center of the wire and Really should have all three hands. Voltage. Motor uh, connected to a um, ammeter, and we got the positive and the negative of the ammeter, and the negative of the motor in the positive. And we're taking the negative voltage into the ammeter and the positive voltage um, from the positive, but we've got our resistor. 100 ohms in between that now when I spin it up you see how the needles deflected to the right you see how it's dropping watch so it's spinning see the needle and so if we get it spinning up a bit I will battery for Eloise's laptop replaced with the HP Spare 484170 001. It's also got another code 7F0994. Working on some lights for Ruth Claire here, and we've got a microwave switch hooked into this right now as a test. I was hoping I could use this as a turn signal, but it turns out the switch is in and it's off or it's out it's on I wanted the opposite of that so anyways there's um, uh, pressed got the switch pressed not pressed pressed not pressed pressed not pressed so normally this is the state it would be on the red brake light on the bike is going to be on red and this is basically just a uh, bike reflector which we've put an LED behind it and then uh, Ran some wires to it and put some hot glue to hold it in place. Just drilled a hole under the back. And here's our turn signals. I'm working on uh, one of two channels. Here's the circuit schematic. As you can see on the top left, we got our, um, uh, that guy right there, the, the brake light. And the positives on the top with the negative coming down. And we got our power source coming in on the right, 3 to 3, 4.5 volts DC. And then at this point, 
we've got uh, left and right LEDs as you can see down here there's two on I've got uh, an orange and a yellow to kind of represent amber which would be like a normal turning signal on a car and in the center here we've got the negatives of all four LEDs connected um, in well connected together and they go to the negative wire and then the positive um, the two sets of LEDs have their positives connected and then between those two positives you can then take the positive from the top rail like up there over here down through a switch and then by moving it up or down making the connection then either left or right LEDs come on for the bike pretty cool eh? and what's neat is um, uh, the brake light 